we're gonna simplify the golf swing into three steps. They are so easy, but not only are they gonna simplify the swing, they're gonna give you more power, consistency, and save your back. Let's get into it. Step one is giving you the sensation of using a rotation, a wind up, but doing it correctly. And it's all about moving from the upper back to the neck area here, okay? We want to not turn this way, all right? We don't want to turn the hips. What we're looking for is a movement just of this upper body to wind up, to wind up there. I'm feeling like my chest is pointing to the sky. My right shoulder is kind of going up and I'm using my upper body to make the turn. And that feeling, wind up, is not so much a turn, okay? It's a movement of winding our body up with just the upper body, all right? That is the backswing. I don't want you thinking about where the hands are, how much you're bending the wrist, how much you need to hinge the wrist, how much you need to transfer weight. All of those things sometimes have a place. But right now, really focus on one sensation and that is to wind the upper body, the chest, this sort of barrel area up to the sky here. That is it. The arms are going to follow if you have suppleness in them, if you have a connection and a balance of the weight of the club. We've got a good hold of the club, but we're winding up this way. And that is step one. There isn't a golfer alive who hasn't heard about the One Piece Takeaway. You just see it everywhere on the Golf Channel, YouTube, magazines, telling you to do a One Piece Takeaway. But what people don't tell you is the downsides to it. And trying to do a One Piece Takeaway when your body doesn't facilitate it, when you don't understand how the rest of things work, is really going to screw up your golf swing. I want you to just grab a golf ball, okay? Go and grab one out of your bag right now because this is going to help. Take your setup and I want you to just not think about one piece, two piece, anything piece. I want you to just take this ball in your right hand and I want you to move it to the halfway position, okay? Just sort of think, replicate a golf swing somewhat, but I'm moving it to the halfway position. And I want you to notice a couple of things here when you're doing it for yourself. Did you have tension? Did you try and put the you know, the, your hands in a very specific spot? Or did you just allow it to move relatively freely? I would wager you did. And also, the arm is going to have a little bit of hinge in it, okay? We're not rigid, we're not dead straight, and this is what tends to happen. We are allowing a bit of a suppleness. It's a much more of a throw feeling, okay? And once you've got that, just try this as well. Grab your club. I mean, I've got a driver in my hand. It really doesn't matter. But I'm holding my club underhand this way. And what we're going to do is feel like from a starting position here, I'm going to toss it back that way. Just slowly tossing it here. Okay, there. The, the angle is sort of pointing down towards the ball. All right. No, we're not talking about specifics too much. But look at the way everything is folding and moving. It's not being thought about what's happening specifically here, 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 here. My objective is just to try and get it somewhere back this way. And what I want you to notice is, whether you've noticed it yet or not, is there is movement. Just by that task alone, there is movement. I actually start the sequence in my feet, in my legs. I'm applying pressure to start the movement. I'm not here going that way, okay? And then sort of turning. It is a natural movement into the feet, tossing it back here. Feeling that elbow slightly hinge. I'm not locked in and I'm certainly not straight. It's all about being natural because that's the best way you're gonna find repetition and consistency without having to hit thousands of freaking golf balls and without putting strain on your body. If you're frustrated with your bunker shots of duffing them, thinning them, just not having confidence, 
I'm gonna give you a really easy technique to get the ball out closer to the hole all the time. And it's so much simpler than what you're trying right now. So, a typical bunker tip that you've heard is to stand open. Okay, so you, your feet are aiming left, your club face is aiming at the target, which is fine in a way. But what I don't like for many people is it changes the energy that you're putting into the ball. You're kind of a bit too passive, trying to either help it up or there's just not enough commitment into it. Or we're standing open and the hands get pushed forward and we dig down like this. And you're like, well, I'm standing open. What I want you to do to improve your method, your reliable technique, is I actually want you to stand pretty square. And if you want to pull that right, your trail foot back, just a couple of inches. So it almost feels now that my back is to the target a little bit more. It doesn't mean that I don't have the club face open, but my club face is actually aiming a little bit right of the flag. But my intention and my path is going to be towards the flag. So it's gonna have very little effect. We're not trying to use the hands as much. We're going to actually feel that we're sort of winding up and getting our back to the target a lot earlier and a lot more committed to it. So you can almost see that I've got a full swing by about here. And it's because I've pulled this back and I'm turning and winding up this way. I'm not trying to just pick up the hands. Everything is almost going around me this way. And what is that purpose? It's because from here, even if you just stand up and feel this for a moment, it feels like I can attack the back of the ball, the sand, with authority, but I can accelerate without losing my posture too much, without manipulation too much. So it's this feeling that I can commit down and have that reliable strike and low point. So I shut the feet down. I feel like I'm keeping my sort of chest up and then my chest down a little bit more. And it doesn't mean that I stop here, okay? If I accelerate enough, the gravity and the momentum is going to pull me through. So I do finish nice and tall, but I don't want you to worry about that too much just now. I want you to have a nice balance set up, feeling behind the ball, and we're going to wind up and accelerate through. Can you spot the significant difference between these two golf swings? One of them is gonna give you effortless power and consistency. The other is gonna leave you frustrated hitting all sorts of shots, but it is a very simple setup adjustment. Can you see it? I'm gonna show you how to implement it. If you find that yourself, when you're taking your setup and it's with driver, it's with irons, if you find that you're sort of on the side of your chest here a little bit, okay? I want you to, with or without a club, get up and try it now. Take your grip, put your arms in front of you here. And what we're gonna do is just slowly lower them on top of the chest just on top, a few inches, until you can feel your upper chest just sort of touching the back of your triceps up here. So it's a very careful placement of these arms. I'm not, I'm not tense, I'm not forcing them down, and I'm certainly not keeping like my elbows tucked in. This isn't about that. It's about the connection from the upper chest to the upper arms, which will help the arm and body sequence happen a lot more naturally a lot more consistently. So take the club and place it on top of your chest. And now from there, we take our setup and we come down. And the reason why this works so well is because we want to try and maintain this contact up here all the way through the swing, the back swing, all the way to the top. I'm still sort of feeling my upper chest connected. But here's the thing, I'm not forcing it. I'm not really going like, okay, gotta keep it there it's tight in. It's more of an awareness. Just being aware, are you still maintaining that connection? Because it will help you swing around a central point and allow those arms to follow what your body wants to do. They're not fighting against each other, but we're also not trying to sort of lock everything in, keeping those elbows tight and super connected. That stuffs you as well. I'm gonna show you a couple of really obvious quick fixes to hit better drives. And it's got very little to do with technique. One of the biggest 
losses to your drives is where you hit it on the club face. You see, the club is designed to hit longer drives from the top of the club face here and actually favors hitting it out of the toe. That may be all well and good, but the problem is too many of you are hitting your drivers out of the heel. You're setting up with your driver right behind the ball. But what happens is during the swing, because we're going on the upswing with the driver, as we actually strike it, we're hitting the driver in the worst possible spot if we don't allow for it, which is sort of out of the neck, lower on the club face. And what that's going to do is create more spin, lack of distance. With that understanding, we can make a tiny little adjustment before every single drive you hit. I want you to actually set up your driver as if you're going to hit it out of the toe of the club and moving it back just about an inch or so behind the ball. What this is going to do is encourage you to swing up and from inside to out, okay? If you're over here, it's very unlikely that your swing is going to be pulled across this way. But if we start it out the middle, we're pulling across this way, we're gonna get that glancing blow out of the heel. So set up out of the toe and an inch behind the ball, and I wager you're gonna be hitting the center of the club face a lot more frequently.